Now, as the, um, the manager of the data and photo control department, I had maintained five complete sets, duplicates, of, of each one of the mission's photographic work, the reels, the films, and individual pictures. I must have had well over uh, 12 different filing cabinets with everything organized in it. Um, I asked, I said, well, why can't we just donate those to some of the universities? I mean, they, the science department would love to have these things because I'm sending out pictures to principal investigators all over the world, and they're just having a heyday looking at the geology of the moon and studying it. And the, the word came back to me, said, no, destroy all but one set. Don't care what you do with them, but get rid of all but one set. Well, I thought that was a little a little strange. I, I couldn't see what we had spent our money on as, you know, the, the people and wind up being told to destroy it, to throw it away. So I did. I threw three complete sets into the Dempsey dumpster to be hauled off to trash. The fourth set I put inside a duffel bag and kept that. I took it home and I kept it for quite a few years uh, after that. Th this actually uh, container here is where we had our external, the storage of our lithium hydroxide canisters here on the outside. And on the other side is where the, the lunar sample information uh, also package was stored, where we could deploy it and then uh, lay it out on the lunar surface. All right, this, this is my spacecraft, actually. This is the lunar test article number eight, LTA-8. I have over 3,000 hours as a spacecraft pilot testing inside of this particular vehicle. We used it uh, at the Johnson Space Center inside the big vacuum chambers. We, this, this vehicle has been pumped down to 10 to the minus 12 tour to simulate full vacuum. Uh, the astronauts trained in it. Uh, this, this vehicle was space rated. It could have been used to go to the moon, but it was the test article that we used in, inside the vacuum chambers at NASA. This uh, gold mylar coating on the outside is used for insulation, but the more yellowish looking area here, this is where we stored the extra lithium hydroxide canisters, which we used in our environmental control systems inside to scrub and purify the CO2 out of the air and return pure oxygen back into the, the spacecraft. Um, as you can see, the, the landing gear, uh, the legs extended and the ladder coming out. This is where Neil Armstrong came down the ladder and made his first famous one step for man and one giant leap for mankind right off of the, the foot pads. One thing they don't show is underneath the, each one of the foot pads was a four foot landing probe. Most people don't realize that when we landed on the moon, as we got down to the final phase, the final burn, when those four foot probes touched the lunar surface, set off a light right next to my controls where I'm controlling roll, pitch, yaw, and azimuth up and down. I had a button, which was engine cutoff. When that light came on, I hit the button, it shut the engines off, and we free fell the last four feet till we had touched the lunar surface. So uh, you'll see that the, the engine at the base, it was designed so that the, uh, uh, if we landed too hard and, it, and the legs buckled and it crushed, that, that the bell, the engine nozzle, would actually have crushed. But not one single time did we hit so hard that we even, even touched the bell on the surface of the moon. So I'm quite excited to see this old spacecraft again after so many years. One of the things I've, I found interesting is um, inside the, the triangular shaped window that's up at the top, we had a 16 millimeter camera up there, which was the uh, uh, approach and landing sequence camera. And it was actually that camera that was shining down on the landing gear that followed Neil Armstrong and the other astronauts uh, as they went out on the lunar surface. I was reading uh, an op-ed where it said that there was a, a camera that was mounted on the landing gear that videotaped um, Neil Armstrong on his first land. The camera was not there. The camera was actually up in the co-pilot's window, mounted right door directly over the top. So the old bird is still there, ready to fly. Okay. All right. The, one of the questions people have brought up and said, we couldn't have gone to the moon because there's no way you could get inside the lunar module wearing a full spacesuit. That's not true. I've been in and out of this particular spacecraft probably, you know, 50 times wearing a, a spacesuit. And uh, it, trust me, it can be done. Uh, as you can look up and see the entrance into the lunar module here, the conspiracy people will say that, well, you couldn't have gone to the moon because astronaut wearing his, his life support pack, backpack could not have gone through the front door. Well, I have pictures of me actually going in and out of it quite a few different times. Uh, and you definitely can. You get down on your knees and you crawl. Part of it you actually have to almost lay down to go through the last part, but you clear, you stand up on the inside and you switch over from your life support system on your back, connect up to the environmental control system inside the spacecraft, get it going pressurized, then you can close the door and pressurize the spacecraft so you're, you can then take off your spacesuit and relax a little if, if you can. Now, around the side, actually <clears throat> in the area where the American flag is right now is actually 
where the Apollo Lunar Surface Information Package, commonly called the ALSEP, was located. And the astronauts had to know how to, to pull lanyards to fold the clamshell up and then allow them to pull out the, uh, the, the nuclear power pack, for one, so they could put that in to, to power all the experiments they were leaving on the lunar surface. And these were all stored in this particular location. The, the gold and stuff you see around is called mylar, and it's as thin as what the cellophane would have been on a, a package of chewing gum. And, uh, but it made an excellent insulation for all the, the heat and solar uh, radiation that we might be picking up while we're on the lunar surface. Let's go on around the other side. Gotcha. Right. On, on the other side, when I was showing you the other one and I was talking about the ALSEP package, that was actually where the solar power cells were kept. This, as you can see, the, the square-shaped bucket area coming out, this was actually where the ALSEP package was on the back side of the lunar module. And if you look up at the top, this strange-looking cluster at the top, those are your RCS jets, or reaction control thrusters. And having them on all four corners allowed the, the astronauts, when they would fire their thrusters, they would either set the aircraft into a roll, either an X, Y, or Z roll, or sustained pressure would give them a translation either in the X, Y, or Z plane. So we actually flew like a helicopter with both left hand and right hand. Right hand was attitude control, the left hand was translation control, the TTCA. Oh, this, this is fascinating here. Uh, if you look, they've got a display which shows how the command and service module were linked up with the lunar module. Now, uh, once we made Earth orbit and we went into, um, uh, while we were still in Earth orbit, we had to separate from the Saturn V, take this craft, turn it around, come back in and dock to the lunar module and then extract the lunar module out of a shroud, which is where it was protected during uh, ascent and launch. Once we were on the way to the moon, we stayed connected like that until we went into lunar orbit. Once we were in lunar orbit, the spacecraft, which uh, the first one we landed on the moon was the Eagle, we call it, and uh, Snoopy. The Eagle backed away and was able then to fly free and separate from the command and service module, make its descent down to the lunar surface. And as you know, uh, the astronauts picked up a few of the, uh, the lunar samples on Apollo 11. It was a very short stay, got back in. Now, if you look at the bottom stage, it was designed to be a launch pad. When, once we were ready to leave the moon, we actually fired our rocket engines. There were our metal guillotines that would fire, that would cut all the cables connecting the descent stage with the ascent stage, and the rocket engine would then uh, carry the lunar module back up into lunar orbit where we then could re-rendezvous with the command and service module. And, um, well, this is a good picture. Shows somewhat like the limb looked like once it was separated, and they would do set it up into a roll mode so that the, um, the pilot inside the command module uh, Mike Collins, for instance, on Apollo 11 was still inside the command module, and he's taking these pictures of the lunar module as, his, as he's rotating and going around. And they call this one LIM-2, so that would have been um, the Apollo, uh, Apollo 9 mission. Okay, two, three, four, yep, that's the one it would have been. Okay.